This is Project Amber, uh, vlog number two. I'm coming to you from a very dark van. Why is it so dark? Aha. Pretty dark. Yes, I am in pyjama bottoms. Ignore that. You're not supposed to see that bit. Oh, over there, there's a ship being loaded up with looks like remnants of a building. And they're just craning it and dropping it. It's now eight o'clock, and um, they're still going. From the last post, I was in Portugal. Hey, Lance's ass! How are you doing today? Can you get your bum out of my face? Thank you. Come here. Look at Lance's alfalfa. Look at that. That's a throw, that is. Ah. I know, it's annoying, isn't it? You'd have thought, you know, clocking off time would have been about two hours ago. But no, I was right in the ball. Uh. Ah, that was the pit. What are you doing? I just got bested by an eight month old puppy. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. No, oh, and he's going to lick his dick. So the last post I was in Portugal. I stayed at Camping Rosario for three days, um, and it was lovely. I mean, the weather outside was terrible, but we were hooked up, so I had all the entertainment, you know, without worrying about batteries going flat. And I'll be honest, it's a bit of a blur. One thing you'll come to learn if um, if you do follow along with these things is my memory is terrible. I decided to head for the Algarve. How much shit have they got into putting that? The forecast said it was going to be dry down there. It wasn't. That was about a six hour drive because we were going up through mountains and all sorts of things. Saw some really, really amazing sights, but couldn't get out take any videos or photos or anything because it was just horrendous. Windscreen wipers were on full pretty much the entire drive. Did a couple of runs to Lidl supermarket while I was in Portugal. Nothing massively interesting to report there apart from the fact that they do duff beer. I was aiming for Faro. It was dark and I was knackered. The dog was kicking up a bit of a fuss because he wanted to get out and stuff. But on this app that I've got called Park for Night Fact, I'll show it you right now. You were in Seville. Uh, you find out where you are, and then it brings up car parking areas, paid camping areas, free areas. That little yellow one there is off road, which I try. So I got as far as Kitira. There was a little icon right next to the beach. By the time we got there, it was pitch black. All I could see was the trees. Um, how I didn't smash the chimney on the way in, I don't know. I smashed it on the way out though. So I kind of weaved my way through the trees, pulled up, <clears throat> stuck all the spotlights on the van, and gave the dot. Oh, <clears throat> oh, that's better. Lose my voice. I've run out of juice, <clears throat> and the water in the tank is questionable as whether you should drink it or not. So I've got JD and Coke. It's been a long day. Next morning though, I can see blue skies. I had uh, a load of pine trees behind me, so there was loads of shade. The van was just creeping out of the trees, so it was getting the heat. The solar panel was charging everything. I was on the cliff, and it was the sea. There was a group of French travellers turned up the second day. Nice to meet some more people that had actually built their own van. Come to day three, um, morning, I just woke up. I uh, just put the kettle on, and there was a knock at the door. It was the police, and I was expecting them to start handing fines out and start having a real go at me. All they were doing is warning me that I can't stay at the beach anymore because the storm apparently two weeks ago, the beach was actually in line with the cliffs um, and a previous storm had been so bad it had actually ripped away all the beach and some of the cliffs so I had to leave. I was gutted. I was really really gutted. I was happy to spend another week or so there if I could. So I moved into the town a little bit 
and I was not in the mood to drive. I was still kind of waking up a bit. I really didn't want to go hunting around for somewhere to stay. As I come out over a roundabout, there was a massive camper stop. And I thought, you know what, it's not really my cup of tea. But in my mind, that kind of side of the motorhoming and van life game is very clicky. And you can see on the faces of all these elderly, mostly French couples, just the look of, well, there goes the neighbourhood. What is that? I ended up right down the bottom of the field. It was the only place I could find, right in the corner. And just as I pulled up and parked up, got the van level and stuff, uh, a German van pulled in and just completely blocked me in. I actually saw them as they got out and they were lovely, they were really nice. The woman was a little eccentric, I'll get on to her in a minute. So I was 50-50 on it really. I um, I didn't really like where we were. Lance, being eight months old, still jumps up everybody and goes after things and just is a general annoyance. So it was a, a lead on job. He's a sprocker spaniel, he's full of beans all the time. So the more I can have him off the lead and free and running around and doing what he wants, the better. I was pretty much ready to ask the German couple to let me out a bit and be on my way. But I got the drone out real quick because it was quite a spectacle. I mean, there must have been a hundred vans there. We had a, a row on the outside and then they started to put another double row on the middle as well. There was that many of them. And then people were like doing ball games. There was people had tables and chairs out. It felt like a proper neighbourhood. It was actually quite cool. And as I had the drone out, um, the guy from two camper vans up come down. Turns out he's got a drone as well. And before we knew it, we were just both there playing with drones. He then got me a beautiful omelette. And then we sat outside and drank beers. And they gave me so many tips and tricks and contacts for uh, this way of life. We're kind of travelling the similar kind of way through Spain. So who knows, you might see him again. So next morning, I wake up bit of a foggy head and I completely forgot I was abroad. I was about to go to Nina's convenience store which is in Coventry around the corner from my house in England. Lance went out for his wee and instantly disowned me, ran straight up to Andy and Jen, started getting the van ready to, to head out. And as I was doing all that, putting everything away, washing dishes and stuff, I always start the van. It takes about five to six minutes for the air suspension to pump up. Fifty minutes had passed and the compressor was still whirring away. And as I stepped outside, I could hear a real nasty hissing noise. It was a problem I had back home, and I thought I'd fixed, and the problem is back. So for now, it's just been bodged. I just took the tea piece out for the auto drain and jammed it straight into the tank. So as I was doing this, the German lady from next door had come over, and she was playing with the dog. Apparently, she was going to see some old friends nearby and stuff. It was all very nice, very lovely. Very kind of your typical chat to an elderly lady until she said, now please excuse me, I must go and do the cocaine with my husband. Staying at that camper stop, despite all my preconceptions and judgement, turned out to be the best move of the trip so far. I learnt so much, I met two new friends, an old lady that <laughs> likes to sniff. <laughs> I um, set back off for Spain. They said Portugal is just getting absolutely mullered for the next two weeks. It's just going to be like this. Even when it's not peeing it down, it's going to be grey and miserable. And this is all of the stuff I left England for. So despite the fact that I'd only seen a little bit of Portugal, I wasn't willing to put up with the, the wet and the grey, horrible weather. Because it's just it's depressing. However, now, looking at it, I could have been on a Portuguese beach, not a Spanish dock. I was going to drive all the way to Seville that night. But uh, I noticed on the map there was a, a nice big national park uh, with quite a lot of wooded areas. And I went for it. I went really, really far into this forest. Um, back of my head constantly was, you've got a problem with your air suspension. Your idle on the engine is a bit funny. You should probably get that looked at. Later on in that day, I'd found a, the valve and the wheel down here had been ripped clean off. And I had a slow puncher. Amazingly, it hadn't, it ripped off but sealed itself. Um, I don't know how that happens. Someone must have been looking down on me at that point, but um, the, the tire was, was flat. But again, we'll get onto that in a minute. So I got the drone out again, um, and I was playing around with this feature on it called Active Track, which you lock it onto a, a moving object, um, decide how it's flying, like whether it's going to pan around or zoom or zoom out and stuff. 
eventually I think I will do a video about the drone um, and how it works and stuff because a lot of people are getting in touch with what it is and, and how it works and stuff. At one point it was tracking the van at the rear and I was driving off and little did I know that it was kind of lifting up as it was tracking me straight into a tree um, and we were going about 25 miles an hour so had it hit the tree uh, it, you know, it had caused some damage. We had noticed the tree and it was actually still hovering millimetres in front of the tree. It had noticed the tree, shut everything down, it was just stopped and it was hovering. It's a really, really good bit of kit. I ended up spending two nights in the forest. Not to put a down on it again, but it rained. <laughs> it is really, really frustrating now. I mean, there's aspects to it that you don't even think about, like you come in and this this one room is your house it's not like in a normal house where you you take your shoes off in the porch or in the kitchen or whatever and put them aside and then go into the living room you come in here your shoes have made the floor wet the dog will make the floor wet he'll make the sofa wet he'll make his bed wet trying to dry a dog's bed with what i have here is impossible today i got drenched my clothes are all in the shower room at the minute they're not drying they're just dripping and I don't want it dripping on the laminate floor. The floor is actually pretty knackered. Um, it was kind of an oversight when I did that. I use laminate floor because during the strip out of the van, when I was building it, the tracks for the stretcher, they weren't coming out. The, everything, all the bolts underneath were rusted solid and it was a colossal job to get them out. This took up off the floor like a good five mil, maybe. At the time I was thinking lino's no good, I'd just get laminate floor and route out channels that the track can sit in um, and I'll be done. That was a real bad mistake. I should have plied and then linoed over the top. Uh, so if you're in the early stages of your van build and you're thinking how you're going to do your floor, don't do laminate floor. The joins allow water in and it's one winter it'll be knackered. Learn from my mistake. I woke up this morning, um, I had to get the dodgy tyre fixed. So I drove to Pilas, which was a town about 15 minutes away with the nearest tyre shop. Drove it straight in, whipped the wheels off, gave me a choice of valve, all in Spanish. I didn't know which one was what. Just picked the middle one, safe bet. And then we headed off to Seville. And here we are. Oh my God, they've stopped loading the ship. Ah, oh. <laughs> yes. And it's stopped raining. I'm not sure what I'm doing tomorrow. I really want to stick around and see Seville but the weather forecast is saying no. I think I might go and check out Almeria, which apparently is Europe's only desert. And I'm thinking desert doesn't rain much. So that's basically where my, my mind is lying right now. But for tonight, I'm going to cook some very late dinner and continue my killer marathon of the American office. That's what's been getting me through the rainy days. So yeah, I think that about does it. If you enjoyed it, feel free to um, follow along. This is on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Eventually there will be a blog website, but I, there's no excuse. I've just been really lazy. It's half built, and that was back when I was at home. So I will pull the finger out and get that done as well. Um, but yeah, for now, thanks for watching.